Hi, my name is Fraser and welcome to GPU Solutions. If you're new here, I take you inside the world of graphics card repairs, upgrades and crazy mods that very few people would dare try. In today's video, I'll be showing you another ASUS RTX 2080 Ti being upgraded from 11 gigabytes to 22 gigabytes. But I'll also be answering some of the most asked questions from the previous upgrade video. While the repair is underway, I'll talk you through everything from compatibility and performance gains to tools, cost, and whether it's something you can try yourself. So let's jump in. In my last video, I upgraded an RTX 2080 Ti from 11 gigabytes to 22 gigabytes. And wow, the response was incredible. Over 4,900 comments came in, with tons of amazing questions. So in this video, I'm going to break down the most asked ones from upgrade possibilities to cost and to whether it's worth it or not. Let's start with a big question everyone seems to have. Can any GPU be upgraded to have more memory? Well, technically speaking, no. Not every graphic card can be upgraded. It depends on three things. The maximum supported memory density the GPU core and PCB were designed for, whether the card's BIOS can recognize and utilize higher capacity memory, and whether the memory type is compatible. For example, GDDR6 and GDDR6X are not interchangeable. Let's break it down. When a GPU core is designed, it has a set number of memory controllers in the core. Each memory controller is responsible for each memory module. This can also be doubled using the clamshell technique by using one memory module on top and one at the bottom of the PCB. Some examples of this technique are RTX 3090, RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabytes, RTX 9060 XT 16 gigabytes, etc. If your GPU does not have memory slots at the back, this technique cannot be used. Next, when a GPU is designed, the BIOS is written with all the configurations the GPU will run in. That includes memory timings, power ratings, fan curves, and much more. What we are interested in is the memory timings. There are three manufacturers that produce memory modules. Samsung, Micron, and Hynix. Each of them design their own memory modules on different platforms like GDDR5, GDDR5X, GDDR6, GDDR6X, and GDDR7. Micron is the only one producing the GDDR5X and GDDR6X memory modules. GDDR5 and GDDR5X are no longer produced for graphic cards. For example, the RTX 4090 uses GDDR6X memory modules, and each memory module used is of 2 GB. The BIOS for the RTX 4090 will have memory timings data for the modules used on the GPU. In this scenario, the RTX 4090 GPU has only data for Micron and not for Samsung or Hynix as they don't produce this memory. Let's take another example, the RTX 3070. This GPU uses GDDR6. In this case, the BIOS has memory timings for Samsung, Micron, and Hynix, as all of them produce the GDDR6 module. Also, these modules are produced at different speeds like 14 gigabits per second, 16 gigabits per second, and 20 gigabits per second. Lower ones are also produced like 12 gigabits per second, but it's not relevant to us right now. Depending on which memory modules were available during the testing phase of the GPU, you may find some data like timings available in the BIOS. So for RTX 4090 using the GDDR6X, the only data you will find in the BIOS is of different speeds of the module and not capacity. The largest capacity module ever produced on GDDR6 and GDDR6X platform is 2 GB. Whereas on GDDR7, the largest capacity module is 3 GB. 
Theoretically, a GPU using one gigabyte memory module on GDDR6 or GDDR6X can be doubled by using a two gigabyte module. Example, the RTX 2080 Ti using one gigabyte memory module for a total of 11 gigabytes can be doubled to 22 using the 2GB module. GPUs using 2GB module on GDDR7 can be increased using the 3 gigabyte module. For example, a 5090 32 gigabytes uses a 2 gigabyte memory module of GDDR7 can be increased to 48 using the 3 GB module, but it is yet to be tested. It's still untested territory. Next, Samsung, Micron, and Hynix have a standard that they follow when it comes to producing GDDR6 memory modules. The data lines and command lines are positioned in the same location and the same goes for the power lines. NVIDIA or AMD can design a GDDR6 PCB and install memory modules from any of these brands. But it's not the case in GDDR6X. Micron is the only company that manufactures GDDR6X and since they are the only one, the data lines and command lines are positioned differently. Though the number of pins of GDDR6 and GDDR6X are the same, you cannot install a GDDR6 memory module on a PCB that's designed for GDDR6X. And the same goes other way around. GDDR7 has more pins on the module as compared to GDDR6 and GDDR6X. And again, the location of data lines and command lines are not the same. So none of the memory can be interchanged. GPUs that already use the 2GB memory module on the GDDR6 or the GDDR6X platform cannot be upgraded further as that's the production limit and no higher memory modules are available. GPUs that use the 1GB memory module on the GDDR6 or the GDDR6X platform have the possibility to upgrade to 2GB. But can this possibility become a reality? It depends on whether the timings are written in the BIOS. There was a time when editing the BIOS was a thing, but now NVIDIA and AMD have their BIOSes behind digital signatures. There is, if you edit the BIOS, the default drivers will not detect or boot the GPU. Some models like the 2080 Ti and the 3070 are excellent candidates because they are using the 1GB module and have the right layout. They also have the memory timings for the 2GB module written in the BIOS itself. But others like the RX 6000, the 7000 and 9000 series from AMD already use the largest produced capacity and the same goes for the 40 series cards. At this point, you must be thinking, I have seen the RTX 4090 with 48 gigabytes. How is that possible? This GPU uses a custom PCB with clamshell technique and custom written BIOS and drivers to get it all working together. Another common question asked is, does more VRAM increase the performance of the GPU? Is it useful in gaming? Is it useful in AI? Well, there's no straight answer to that. I would say it depends. First, let me clarify. Increasing memory capacity does not increase the performance of the GPU. It does increase the capacity and your gameplay will be as smooth as it can get. Better 1% lows, etc. If you play AAA titles or games that need a lot of memory specifically to run the high game textures, having a GPU with more VRAM helps as more VRAM means your GPU core does not have to rely on the system RAM to load the data. When your GPU runs out of VRAM and it's more likely to happen with the 8GB models, the game will load the data in the system RAM, which is much slower compared to the GPU VRAM resulting in a st in stuttering and loss of frame rate due to increase in latency. Most of the games released nowadays do tend to exceed the 8GB memory buffer. And in future, this is going to be the norm. 
Some games exceed the 8 GB memory buffer even at 1080p, but as of today, it's not the case with all the games. It just depends on which games you play. What suits you may not suit all. It's just a matter of time. A GPU upgraded from 8 GB to 16 is more relevant than a GPU with 11 GB upgraded to 22 in gaming. When it comes to AI, trust me, no matter how much VRAM you throw at it, it's always less. AI is a different ball game where even the RTX 6000 with 96 GB is not enough. There is no end to how large a data set can get. When it comes to AI, it all depends on how much data one can process quickly and at what price. For example, an RTX 4090 with 24GB is more expensive than an RTX 3090 with 24GB. An RTX 3090 with 24GB is more expensive than an upgraded RTX 2080 Ti with 22GB. If you have the money, an RTX 6000 with 96 gigabytes can satisfy your needs. But for someone on a budget, a 2080 Ti with 22 gigabytes may just be sufficient. A lot of you asked about the cost of upgrading your GPU. If you're sourcing the memory yourself, the cost of GTDR6 14 gigabits per second and 16 gigabits per second is anything between 12 to 16 dollars per module. But if you buy new, and I suggest you do buy new, it depends which country you're in and the cost of shipping. Add another hundred dollars as a service fee and that's the cost of upgrades. When you send your GPU to me, it's 205 for the 3070 and $235 for the 2080 Ti, and that's including the memory. So it only makes sense if you want to extend the useful life of your GPU. Some of you said, I wish I had the skills to do that, and truly I appreciate that. But realistically, this mod isn't for beginners. Beyond having the right tools, you need refined skills, and those only come with practice. If you're seriously considering doing upgrades like this, I recommend starting with dead GPUs. I suggest practicing removing and reinstalling memory modules, perfect your reboiling techniques, and avoid working on functional cards until you can get it consistently right. Until then, it's best to leave the work to experienced technicians or find someone with the skills to do it for you. I've seen more GPUs ruined by enthusiastic DIY attempts than I can count. Here's a list of what you will need if you're thinking of attempting it. A microscope for clear visibility. A preheater to heat the board from the bottom high quality flux to prevent oxidation and ensure strong bonds, a hot air station for memory removal and reinstallation, a soldering iron to clean the pads post removal, solder wick for lifting cold solder or unleaded solder, leaded solder wire to blend with unleaded solder and reduce melting temperatures, 2GB memory modules to replace your existing 1GB ones, 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol for cleaning, a board view and schematic to locate straps, a test bench for initial power on and validation, memory testing software to confirm module integrity, stress testing software to verify long-term stability. If you're new to electronics, I suggest building your foundation first on scraps or broken boards. Developing precision at this level takes time, often years. This mod is not for beginner territory, and I cannot take responsibility for any damage caused by DIY attempts. All the AMD 6000, 7000 and 9000 series GPUs use 2GB memory modules on GDDR6 platform and all memory slots are already populated, which means there's no more visible upgrade part for them. I'm currently experimenting on the 3080 Ti 12GB, but so far I haven't managed to get the upgrade to work. If I do, you'll definitely see it on this channel.
As for the 40 series, those GPUs already use the highest capacity memory available, 2GB memory modules. So upgrading them on the same PCB is not feasible. Using a custom PCB could make it possible, but that adds cost and defeats the purpose of budget-friendly upgrades. Now let's talk about the RTX 50 series. These cards use 2GB GDDR7 memory modules and might support upgrades to 3GB modules. But they haven't been tested yet. GDDR7 aren't easy to come by and 50 series cards don't come cheap. These kinds of experiments require a lot of investment in hardware and memory and that's where your support truly matters. If you'd like to help, you can become a channel member or use the thanks button. Your contribution makes it possible for me to test and share more of these challenging upgrades. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, drop a comment and share it with your tech buddies. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'd really appreciate if you did. I've got more GPU upgrades and repairs coming your way. So stay tuned and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now. Cheers.